Chess friends, I hope you are doing well today, I have Torch Chess Engine, which has recently been published by the Chess.com team, it is the number 2 chess engine worldwide and is known as one of the strongest chess engines in the era of computer chess, this game is very exciting and breathtaking because I sacrificed my knight to expose the g-file and conclude my attack on the black king, I am pretty sure you will enjoy the game more than anything else on the whole YouTube chess platform, so. Let's get started without wasting any time, I started the game with d4, Torch responded with knight c6 and after c4, e6, employing an opening where Torch even considered bishop to be 4, delving into the Nimtso Indian defense, occasionally, one of my subscribers told me to play this opening in my game so that I could illustrate how to employ chess tactics and strategies in the Nimtso Indian defense and Queen's Gambit declined, at this point, you can play many moves as my arrows showed here. But I chose knight to f3, which is just prophylactic, black here might consider c5, putting his ice cream stall outside of the chess bar, after g3, when the knight comes, you can attack it with d5, before doing anything else, you should capture the knight on c3 and later put your knight on a5 to attack the c4 pawn, how can you protect the pawn? The only way to protect it is to bring the knight back to d2, when the knight moves back, it blocks the queen's file, and you can see that the d5 pawn can be captured by two pieces, if you are greedy and see a free coin in the road, you might try to pick it up, but let me remind you, the best move for black is to castle, if you are greedy and capture the pawn, you will be caught in a trap, knight to e4 can attack the knight, and when it moves back, I can make a significant move with my knight. Checking the black king, and you will lose the ability to castle, the king will be handicapped. Going back to the revision, we discovered that c5 could be played, but it is not initially good, therefore, after d6, queen here, torch castled, and I played bishop to g5, putting pressure on the knight, of course, h4 and h5 can come, you can see that all my possible attacks are lying on the kingside with my bishop and queen joining to attack the black king, torch will have to play very defensively, otherwise, I can kick him out by playing bishop to d3, attacking the pawn, moving back the knight, and pushing forward all my pawns, like an army on the mountain where the king hides underground, I am going to play long castle, settling outside of the country countryside, when h6 and bishop b7 follow in the game, gaining access to this file, we have a very cunning move, I just move my knight back to the d2 square, giving the opportunity to capture the pawn on g2, but can you capture the pawn? Let me guess, the file will be wide open. Therefore, you might consider c5 or another normal move, and I would simply castle short, the queen just goes there, and the game would continue in that manner, there is nothing too serious or interesting about that, however, in our actual game, Torch decided to capture the pawn on g2, if you get any coin on the road, why wouldn't you pick it up? If there's a discount offered in a shopping mall, why wouldn't you go for it? But don't you know that you have set up a trap for yourself, just like how marketers trap consumers? In this position, the rook gains access to the file where the bishop is anchoring to the diagonal, knight to e4 is also possible, where the knight on f6 is pinned to the black queen, the position will be very challenging for you. After the king moves, my knight goes to e4, putting pressure on the knight, many players here might consider bishop, takes e4, as it looks like a good move. But after I capture, and d5 kicks out the knight, your own knight on f6 is pinned. After some pawn exchanges and the knight moving back, many players, including intermediate ones, might consider g5, as the bishop appears to be trapped, but in chess, things are not always as they seem, I can move my knight to f5, attacking the pawn and sacrificing the bishop simultaneously, the point is, after I capture and the queen goes to e2, I can get access to h5, where the black king will face serious threats. After the pawn moves, trying to open the c-file for the black rook to attack me, it won't matter, because my rook can go to g5, threatening rook h5, gaining access to the file, another rook on g1 can arrive to checkmate the black king, the position will be over, after the capture, the rook cannot be taken by the knight, because queen takes h5 will arrive, therefore, after rook to c8, the king moves up, and I am threatening knight to f5, d6, 
discovering a check on the Black King. You will face many difficulties and complain that your air conditioning isn't working, even if you retreat the knight to h7, I can capture the bishop, and knight g8 check will follow, you cannot capture it because there is rook to g1, you will face problems. After king g6, queen to g4 will arrive, and you will see that the king is very vulnerable, it cannot escape because every square is protected by my pieces, and the king will have to surrender. Going back to the position, we discovered that capturing the knight was a very bad choice, that's why black here considered g5, kicking out the bishop, here is a simple question for you, what should you do? You may tell me that if my opponent attacks my bishop, I should move it to a safe square, but no that would be problematic, after exchanging pieces on the e4 square, your attack will be reduced, and black can even create a safe space for the king with f5, kicking out the knight, Black will manage the position, here, the best move for white is to consider h4, sacrificing the knight, afterward, you can attack on the dark squares with a3 and eventually capture the bishop, but that's another variation. In our actual game, I didn't protect the bishop like a fool, here, I played a brilliant move while drinking my cold drink, but before showing you the brilliant move, can you guess what I considered in this position? Try to use your brain, your 69 IQ brain, and think about what I should play now, of course, the brilliant move is knight takes g5, what a brilliant sacrifice it is. If you didn't find that move and ask me why bishop takes g5 isn't good, that move may also come to mind because the same sacrifice can happen on the g5 square, later, when knight takes g5 arrives, the knight will be activated with the bishop anchoring there, of course, the queen can reach the e2 square, from where it can potentially go to h5, these moves are possible, but the knight on g5 doesn't do much, and more importantly, you don't have the bishop, pair to attack the black king. The funniest thing that white can do is knight takes g5 because after the capture and recapture, the bishop creates pressure on the f6 knight and simultaneously on the queen, the rook has opened the g5 file, where rook g3 can potentially come with the idea of attacking the king on h3, you have the bishop pair, which is good for you, just like doing a diet in the upcoming months, if black plays a normal move such as d5, he will be gone, you can load your gun and play rook to g3, where rook to h3 can potentially arrive, after the rook moves and the king goes up, bishop to h6 check will arrive, the king will be dominated and paralyzed by the bishops, when the king moves back, a discovered check by the rook will arrive, and after the knight moves, rook takes h7 will lead to checkmate, the game will be over for you. So, let me share an inspirational quote in sudden with you. Self-love, self-respect, self-worth, there is a reason they all start with self, you cannot find them in anyone else. So, going back to the position, black didn't capture the knight on the g5 square, instead, torch decided to first capture the knight on d2, eliminating your knight brother, and then capture the knight on g5, what is the point? My queen can easily reach e2, followed by h5, what is your plan, torch? My rook can also get to the tower and snipe your king with the rook's help, all my pieces are eyeing your kingside, ready to siege your property. Torch responded with rook to g8, saying to me, how can you attack me on the h3 square? because torch holds a significant position, but be careful, if you don't play defensively or find the best move, you will lose the game. Can you guess what black played in this position? Think a little bit, many players might consider knight to f8, trying to protect these squares, but this is a completely vulnerable move because after rook h3 check, the knight moves, and black will be diminished, I can capture the knight, checking both the black queen and king, you will lose everything, your love and your king, the game will be over. Going back to the position, we discovered that playing knight to f8 is not possible, Torch here told me, if you can sacrifice your piece, why not I? He said, I am the strongest chess engine, and you were created using my UCI sample page, let me sacrifice the rook on the g5 square, of course, 
Playing rook to h3 is not possible because Torch can block the attack with the rook on h5, that's why I had to accept his sacrifice, after the knight moves, I will punish Torch and eat him in my breakfast without salt. Many players might think of rook to g1 because rook h5 or rook to h3 could lead to checkmate, but the problem is that Torch can easily block the position with knight to h7, attacking the rook, when I capture it and Torch recaptures, the rook will be under attack, even if I consider rook to h5, it won't matter because torch has a secret move, is torchlight of enlightenment, bishop to e4, protecting the knight, and controlling the diagonal, the position will be protected. Going back to the reason, we discovered that any rook move is not possible, therefore, I played a very solid move, I decided to stop torch's enlightenment by stealing his meditation chair, I played d5, blocking the bishop's diagonal completely, if you dare to capture the pawn, hoping to open up the bishop's diagonal, it won't matter because after rook g1 and the knight comes to h7, I can easily capture the knight, in the following moves, I can play rook to h5, attacking the rook. Your worst case scenario is that the bishop cannot jump through the pawn on d5 and plant itself on e4 to protect the knight, that is not possible, therefore, after the queen moves, queen to c2 will attack the knight with two pieces, and your position will be completely lost, none of your pieces can defend you, and your king will be left hanging. Going back to the position, we discovered that capturing the pawn on d5 is a very bad choice, that's why Torch initially considered knight h7, attacking the rook, I captured the knight with my bishop, and after the recapture, rook to h5 arrived, after the queen moved, rook g1 arrived, all these moves being illustrated previously, queen to c2 could also arrive, now torch played a defensive move, rook to g8, trying to exchange the rooks, this variation was considered by torch, interestingly. This position didn't happen in the game, I didn't capture the knight on the h7 square, instead, I moved my rook back to the g3 square, hoping to consider rook g1, followed by rook to h3, after the queen moved and pieces were captured, I played f4, a couple of moves later, I played e4, trying to lock down the center completely, after some exchanges, rook h3 queen d3 and e5, all these moves are possible to attack on the king side. But I had to be careful because torch had enough pieces to defend. That's why torch captured the pawn on e4, a forcing move leading to rook to g8, he exchanged the queen for my two rooks and after a queen check, I captured the knight, later, I gave some checks and picked up a pawn, this position is completely winning for me because I have the queen against your two dumb pieces, I sacrificed the pawn, picked up the bishop, and entered a winning endgame, I captured the rook and checkmated torch, torch played an interesting game, but at the end of the day, he had to surrender to me because I am the god of chess, I hope you enjoyed the game, if you did, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel, wishing you all the best, bye bye.